Hey, good Thursday morning. It is September 22nd here. It is the first day of fall technically and we're watching the tropics still in the peak of hurricane season. A lot going on, but a lot of tension here in the United States over about the next week or so is going to be on Invest 98. So we're still calling it Invest 98 because it's really not any better organized this morning than it has been. And we still have a while to track this thing before it ever does become a potential threat to the US, but that could happen by next week. So we're keeping an eye on it. Let's start with there where it is this morning. And it's currently sitting very close to the South American coastline near Venezuela. And after running really close to land, it's finally starting to lift a little bit more towards the northwest. But uh, generally, the wave itself is still moving west here as of this morning. It's also still battling wind shear. So that means it's probably not going to do much more today or even tomorrow as it battles the wind shear. Uh, from Fiona, actually, remember Hurricane Fiona? It's a Cat 4 heading towards the Bermuda area. That'll be there tonight. But that uh, exhaust from the upper levels of Fiona are pushing down on this, and that's creating the shear and just really not in the best environment right now. So 98 is probably going to struggle a little bit longer, but over the next couple of days, as Fiona exits the picture, pushes to the north, the shear will start to relax over the Caribbean. The system will get further away from land, it looks like, and it'll start to move into a better environment by this weekend. So might not have a named system today or tomorrow, but Saturday into Sunday, the chances of having a named system do go up quite a bit. So don't be surprised if we're talking about uh, a named system in the Caribbean this weekend. Next names, by the way, are Hermine and Ian. We'll see which one this might eventually get. So there's a little preliminary timeline as it tracks through. There you can see closer to the Jamaica area and maybe south of Jamaica by Sunday, Saturday into Sunday. And then it starts to make that turn in the northwestern Caribbean and then by around Tuesday. And this is uh, somewhat vague. We'll say Tuesday-ish, give or take a day. It'll be getting close to the Gulf of Mexico. Could range anywhere from the Yucatan to Cuba. And there's still a wide range of possibilities of this thing jumping off into the Gulf of Mexico. And that is important because where this enters the Gulf is going to determine where it sees an impact. And remember, anytime a system, especially a hurricane, gets in the Gulf of Mexico, it's got to hit something. I mean, the entire basin is surrounded by land. So that's why everyone along the Gulf Coast region really needs to be keeping an eye on this, especially into next week. So we still got about two more days of just watching this, see how it evolves. And then I think by this weekend, that picture of where this thing is going to head in the Gulf is going to start to become clearer and clearer. When you look at our tropical models here, and keep in mind, we don't have a close circulation yet, so you got to take all this with a grain of salt, but it does help us paint the picture on the environment and some of the scenarios that could play out in the long term. Through today and tomorrow, we're fairly confident. There it is heading west-northwest. Notice you got a tight cluster of models there through at least Saturday. Now by Sunday, notice what happens. Our models start to spread out, and this is where they start to disagree on what's going to happen with Invest 98. Your northern solutions here are near Jamaica by Sunday, but notice these southern solutions. These are your GFS models, and the GFS is the American model, and I'll show you what they're showing here in just a second. But as you go out in time, those more southern solutions, also a little bit quicker solutions in the near term, push 98 up towards the Yucatan, Cosmel, Cancun, and closer to the central Gulf of Mexico by next week. Whereas these more northern solutions, the one that passed closer to Jamaica, pull north towards Cuba and then turn into Florida. So that's why we've really got this kind of scenario of major differences. I mean, a Yucatan landfall is a lot different than a Cuba landfall. And then that's a lot, creates a lot of uncertainty on what this thing's going to do in the Gulf. Now, as you go out in time here, notice we have a spread all the way from the eastern side of Florida to the central Gulf of Mexico. And I mean, you're talking a difference of 700 miles. So really, over the next about two days, we're going to get a better idea on which of these models are handling this correctly, whether it's the Yucatan Peninsula, Peninsula or the Cuba uh, uh, potential. So just kind of that wait and see game. Now, there is um, the where this thing jumps off in the Gulf it is going to determine who likely sees impacts in the Gulf of Mexico region. And if you're if you follow models, and I know a lot of people do, they're following the GFS and the European. Notice they're in agreement up until about Saturday. The GFS starts to pull ahead a bit, starts to become a little bit faster in the in the short term here, 
and that allows the GFS to push further west. Now, notice what the European model is doing by Monday. It's starting to lift to the north. The GFS, they start to separate. The GFS pushes it towards the Yucatan into Tuesday. The European model is over Cuba into Tuesday. They both show it getting into the Gulf, but they don't show it impacting the same areas. The European model, moving it towards Cuba, moves it towards Florida. This would be a good scenario for like the central coast, like uh, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama. Now the GFS model, on the other hand, notice what it's doing. It's moving that system uh, initially a bit quicker, pushes it off to the west, moves into the Yucatan, gets into the Gulf, slows down, and that allows it to lift up to the north here and uh, at a slower rate. So um, I know, you know, we said it's about as clear as mud, really is, and there's just so many scenarios still on the table because we need to wait for Invest 98 to organize more. I do think by the weekend, we're gonna start to see our models, our, especially our global models, hopefully start to come into some agreement, but right now, they simply are not. It does seem like the more likely scenario here with 98 would be a central or eastern Gulf storm. While a western Gulf storm is not out of the realm of possibilities, it doesn't seem as likely right now. But keep in mind, 98, it could end up doing something in the next couple of days that surprises us, and maybe the models have to play catch up and these things change around dramatically. And that's to be expected. Whenever you have an unorganized system like this that doesn't have really a center of, a center of circulation for the models to latch on to, we get what we call model volatility. And you can see these huge swings, and that's to be expected. But the overall trends, somewhat concerning, especially for the Northwest Caribbean islands. We're talking about a very, very conducive environment for a strengthening system, low wind shear, hot sea surface temperatures, even deep in the sea, our sea temperatures are hot, and there's not a lot of dry air. And the overall pattern here looks really conducive for a strong system in the Caribbean. The steering currents are overall conducive to pull something to the north. So we're almost certain something's gonna lift to the north. It's just, when does that happen? Where does it enter the Gulf? The Yucatan or closer to Cuba? and closer to Florida. All these scenarios are possible. So anywhere from really Louisiana to Florida, be keeping a close eye on this. I think by this weekend, we're gonna have a much better idea on what this thing's gonna do. And then by early next week, as it actually launches into the Gulf around Tuesday, of course, the picture, uh, I think the forecast will be pretty confident at that point. But at this point, it's just still a wait and see how Invest 98 evolves over the next couple of days. But certainly something we're going to want to follow closely along the Gulf Coast region, uh, the southern Gulf Coast region, and the northern Gulf Coast region over about the next seven days or so. And if we do see impacts, just a lot of people have been asking, if 98 blows up into a storm here and does approach the northern Gulf Coast, like New Orleans or Alabama or Mississippi, it would probably be the end of next week and two next weekend, the first day of October or so. And of course, you give or take a day here, but that would be our timeline. That's still a long time to track this. So we'll be updating you here daily. We have our tropical updates here online. And of course, we're on Channel 4 WWL-TV giving updates there as well. Thank you so much for joining me.